So, my name is Arielle Saber, and um, I'm actually well, I'm very pleased to be here and thank uh, Luigi Petruzzelli and Debra Montanari for inviting me. Um, I'm an academic. I'm a professor of medieval and Renaissance Italian literature at a liberal arts college uh, in Maine, but I have always been interested in science fiction, and like the man, gentleman in the orange shirt, for years going to Italy and going to bookstores and saying, well, where's the Italian science fiction? How is this possible? And so over the last couple of years, I've thrown myself into research, into figuring out what it is, where it is, the history of it, and they're happy. So that's all I want to say about me, and I just want to give a few quick uh, words about each of the panelists and then turn it over to them to speak, and then, of course, we'll have conversation. So Luigi Petruzzelli um, has been a science fiction reader uh, since before his teens, the golden age of science fiction being 12, so even pre-12, um, and a collector as well. Um, he graduated in mathematics in 1991 and was a teacher in high school for a number of years, and then worked as a consultant, wow, I wonder what that is, um, uh, for a software, a software quality and software project management. Uh, he worked in that area. And in 2007, he founded this wonderful publishing house called Edizioni della Vigna, and it specializes in uh, science fiction, but he will also tell us that there is some more uh, that he publishes as well. And since 2009, it is his full-time job. He is the owner and the editor, and he does some of the translating, and he's done other translating uh, in the past. And then Deborah Montanari is a radio journalist, a writer, um, and someone with a particular interest in and expertise in uh, American film. She began her writing career in 2007 with a techno-fantasy novel called I Draghi di Crisos, which would be The Dragons of Crisos, and in 2009 her second novel, uh, La Luna di Crisos, The Moon of Crisos, and in these years she's also published short stories uh, in fantasy and science fiction. Now her love for science fiction in all of its forms, literary, film, and television, um, has brought her to what she calls the la scienza di confine, border science or fringe science, what some people might call pseudoscience, but that has negative connotations. It's the, that is not fair. <laughs> Yay! 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 <laughs> <laughs> some of the science fiction. Um, and her interest extends into the paranormal and ufology and quantum physics. So really looking at the borders between what we think of as hard science and going beyond that. Yeah. Uh, I did notice the last time I was in a Barnes & Noble bookstore, which is probably the biggest remaining large bookstore chain in America, that the uh, teen paranormal romance had become a section all of its own. Teen paranormal, yeah. Vampires have really taken off. Mm -hmm. Vampires, yeah. And zombies. Okay. This about the age is an interesting t thing because uh, I uh, have also noticed that uh, in my readers, uh, the average uh, age is uh, above uh, 40. <laughs> There, there are some boys, a few boys, we are making a, a heavy work of this, maybe you, Deborah, will speak. Um, for me, it's different, because I speak with my readers, I love to speak with my readers. I, I, I try to have um, relations, a direct relations with the readers. And I discovered that I got readers from nine, uh, nine years old to 90 years old. That's not a joke. Um, really, 90 years old and um, a little child. This is a, a surprise for me because I think my novels are for, um, I think, young adult and adult. But uh, I discovered that the children are very interesting to uh, the science fiction, to fantasy, and are very curious and uh, not distinguish from uh, um, uh, book for uh, little children and book for adults. They not distinguish this. And 
we are adult and this thing, this kind of book. Uh, children, no. They choose uh, the book uh, um, thinking they taste. Questions that I have had have been the bigger questions, and this goes back to the history, is a country that has had Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo and Galileo and Dante and all of these remarkable visionaries, how is it possible with the great literary and scientific tradition that science fiction didn't take off and wasn't loved and appreciated? And you know, we could ask the same question for Germany, though there's more. Um, apparent science fiction, from what I understand from just my research. And, and so I have some answers as a historian of this, but I would love to hear Italian authors and publishers talk about what is it in the Italian culture that may or may not be different from American or Anglophone culture that has blocked the progress. Oh, in one word, in two words, uh, religion and politics. <laughs> the same. I think that there's a lot of war uh, during our history. Um, uh, first, the church. Uh, the church uh, got us a uh, superstition. So don't speak science fi uh, about science fiction because it's a superstition. And uh, science fiction, maybe uh, by the church, uh, uh, can be uh, see like a sort of uh, erratic things, uh, and maybe terrible, <laughs> and come from hell. And um, another word is uh, the politic, because politic control all the fields in Italy. And uh, another thing important is um, we uh, grow with a visual. It's also interesting, and you might, some of you might know that Italy had very low literacy rates um, up to World War II, and so the bigger genres of popularity were obviously film, but they were um, comic books and what were called fotoromanzi, so photo novels. So, what, yeah. uh, you say people uh, think uh, cannot exist uh, the magic in Italy, but in Italy uh, can exist the magic. Uh, the magic is uh, in, in every and in every corner of our um, country. Uh, we got a uh, sword in the rock. Uh, we got uh, Narni uh, is Narnia. Oh, uh, just the uh, uh, people from the other country see the magic in Italy. Uh, and see the beautiful of uh, the fantasy in Italy, Italians don't, don't see. That, that's actually very well put. I mean, Italy is this romanticized country. You go there for your honeymoon, you go there junior year abroad. Everyone has a lot. You say Italy and people smile. I mean, there's something magical about that land, about its history and its beauty. And yet the Italians. And, and I think it is the reason because uh, our writer uh, said in other country and not in uh, in Italy, because in Italy don't, uh, the people don't doesn't believe in uh, in magic, doesn't believe uh, in uh, in science fiction. And you talk about science fiction, other people and people look at you and say, "Oh my God, it's boring." It's boring. It's boring because they think uh, you talk about science and uh, the science uh, is difficult. Uh, no, uh, science fiction is. Uh, Fantasy is creativity, is passion. The, the science fiction writer has a, a big passion in their heart, and they see a beautiful things. Uh, they see uh, other worlds. They see other dimension. It's beautiful to read uh, science fiction and fantasy too. So that that is another question that I want to turn this to back to uh, Luigi. That is. What is the issue, at least in the 20th century, vis-a-vis -vis science in Italy? Why, why is there, ooh, science is boring. Why is there this sense? Sorry? Yes, well, um, uh, this question that you were bringing up, that people hear science and they think it's too hard or they think it's boring. Yeah. And there's this uh, resistance to science, whereas, of course, in America, the sciences get the funding, this and that. So questions around what are the issues, at least in the 20th century, and maybe late, um, 19th century Italy that created a culture that was more favorable to the humanities and the arts 
than to the sciences. And funding, of course, is one of the issues. It's confusing because during fascism, of course, they had to have new, um, they were trying to develop new technologies, futures, and there were groups of people who were very passionate about science and technology, but overall, the culture seems to lean towards the humanities. No, how, how are no, I was uh, adding something about Valerio Evangelisti. I think, I don't know, but I think he's uh, the only one of the Italian uh, science fiction authors who can make a living with it. Because uh, all the others, even the well known ones, uh, Alto Mare, Bellomi, Miglierola, and so on, they have another work. Uh, Alto Mare is engineer, uh, Bellomi is a translator, and so on. Uh, you can't be really a, a pro, or at least it's uh, really difficult to be a pro in Italy. And also literary agents. For Italian authors, uh, practically there is none in Italy for science fiction. Uh, because uh, when I want a novel by Donato Tomare, I call Donato Tomare by phone. Oh, Donato, is this novel is a balance? Uh, we agree and so on. But there are no literary agents there. It's, uh, agents, yeah, the agent. Agency, yeah. Agencies, agents are a problem, too. Yeah. Uh, yes, this is pro a problem. Don't have uh, um, an agent uh, that work for you, so you must search uh, your publisher. You must uh, make uh, all the the works about uh, the publishing, about uh, uh, writing. So it's very difficult for a writer, not only. To, to find a publisher, and uh, but uh, it's difficult to work because uh, there's obstacles in in every corner, and you must fight for everything. If you want want to be a writer inside, okay, you take uh, you take your sword and okay, go to the battle. And, uh, okay. Uh, maybe I can survive. Horror, that's an interesting thing too, is huge in Italy, especially film. Horror film, Italian horror film has, you know, exploded. But if you start digging deeply into the treasure trove of Italian science fiction, especially starting in the 50s, amazing. And Alien, there are scenes from Alien that were inspired by an Italian science fiction story by uh, Pestriniero okay. that nobody knows anything about. I mean, there are, I keep finding it infiltrating into the visual and, and literally Planet of the Vampires. Planet of the Vampires. So, short story made into a B-movie film that then inspired Alien. So there's there's a lot to be seen there, but the, the bigger questions, I mean, there's so many. Why is Italy different as a culture?